Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deploy 4.0. We're very happy to ship Octopus 4, and I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you. The biggest change we've made is to improve the overall UI and user experience. Octopus now has a modern look and feel, and we did some really big redesigns. From a technical perspective, this involved a complete rewrite of our front end, migrating from Angular 1.4 to React plus Redux. We started this journey for technical reasons, but there were two themes that emerged as we progressed. The first was to make Octopus easier to use and more consistent. To illustrate this, I'll walk through Octopus and highlight some of the new features and enhancements. This is our main dashboard, and I have two projects from a single project group. If I jump over to the projects, I can then select that same project group and search if I wanted by project name or description. Now, this is one thing we've added throughout Octopus is quick filters and searches to make it very easy to focus on just the data you care about. If I jump into OctoFX, this is a, a project for a .NET web app. And if I walk through all the different tabs, you can just see things look very modern and they have a nice clean look and feel and it's a very clean layout. I'd like to point out that each page now has much clearer actions. I'm on the deployment process page, and the primary action here is to add a new step, but there's secondary actions, and any other actions then fall within an overflow menu. And that pattern is used throughout Octopus. If you've used older versions of Octopus, you know that sometimes you'd be hunting for buttons because they are in different places, but that should no longer be the case. Things are much, much more consistent, and it's a lot easier to use. Now I'm going to jump over to a new project to explore a few other features. I'm going to jump over to the Phoenix project. It's brand new and I'm going to go ahead and define this deployment process. I'm going to add a package and this is going to be a Node.js app. So I'm just going to say deploy Node.js app. I want it to run on all my web servers and I've already uploaded the package so I can just select that. I'm not going to use configuration transforms or configuration variables. So I'm just going to turn on substitute variables and files and turn off those other two features. So now that that's done, I'll just enter the, my target files and I'm going to click save. This highlights the new interaction model for our forms. When I first added new data, the relevant sections were expanded. But now that I've entered in all my data, everything had switched to a summary view. This is so that you can focus on the right information at the right time and eliminate any noise from extra forms, form elements and sections. So now we're going to head over to the variables page to highlight our new variable editor. So I know the Node.js app I have will display a little message and the variable it's going to be replacing in our configuration files is called message. If I click tab now, I can now enter my first value. I'll write in hello dev. And if I press tab again and press enter, I can now begin scoping it, scoping that variable to whatever I want. In this case, I want it scoped to the dev environment to say hello dev. And if I go through the other options, I can now press enter and add another value for that same variable. It groups them all together. So for this, I'm gonna say hello test for the test environment. Again, I'm going to then go scoping it to the test environment, go through, and finally add my hello prod variable for those prod deployments. So just scope it to production, go through, and now I can add another value. If I hit tab again, I can add it to the list. So my variables list has been updated. I can now enter a new variable or just click the save button and I've added to my, my new variable. So our new variable editor makes it easy to enter a large number of variables quickly. It groups them logically, so they're easier to understand. We have full keyboard support, and we've also added strong filtering, so you can focus on just the variables that are right for you. We can now create our first release, so I'll go ahead and do that. Create the release, yes, I want to deploy to dev, and now this is our new deployment page. The top half allows you to specify where and when you want to deploy your release. So if we click show advanced, you can see a lot more options. And the bottom shows you a preview and allows you to customize it further. 
This is a simple deployment, so there's not much we would do here. It's more useful when you're deploying to many environments or to tenants. So we'll just go with that for now. And I'm just going to click the deploy button. And we successfully deployed. That is an end-to-end -end look at how our new UI is easier to use and some of the highlights of the new user experience. The second major theme that emerged was designing for scale. We want Octopus to be a great experience, whether you're a small team with a single instance or a large enterprise with high availability nodes. Some of our largest customers have thousands of projects and thousands of machines. Now, in the past, we've made targeted changes to Octopus Server to improve performance. But in Octopus 4, we rethought the UI to give a better experience to customers with large installs. Now, we're looking at the exact same Octopus instance, but we're going to work with a different set of projects. My legacy products project group has 148 projects, a few thousand deployments. It's not huge, but it should let us explore some of the new changes and improvements. Now I'm going to head over to our projects page. Now our project page now features a card view. So it's very easy to visually see a lot of projects. We can still filter based on project group and even search based on name and project name and description. The other thing that we built is a fast project switcher. So if you know the name of the project you want to go to, you can type that in, even use keyboard navigation just to move down and jump directly to it. These features let you work with a large number of projects, but focus on just the ones you care about. I'm going to head over to our infrastructure page now. So Octopus previously had an environments page, and this was a single page that had all of your environments, deployment targets, and also things that sort of, we sort of added over time, like accounts, etc. In Octopus 4, we sort of thought that infrastructure represent, better represents everything contained within this. The first thing you see when you come to the new infrastructure page is our overview. Now, this is a summary view of all the important parts of your infrastructure. My favorite part about the overview is that all the summary items are clickable. And this can help me work with really large data sets if I had hundreds, hundreds of environments or thousands of deployment targets. In this case, I'm just gonna look at all my web servers. This takes me to the deployment targets view, pre-filtered for the web server target role. And I can see a really nice clean list view of all the deployment targets with that target role. And using the filters, I can also further restrict that. For a small data set like this, it helps, but it's even more important when you're working with hundreds of environments or thousands of machines. If you prefer to manage your infrastructure by environment first, you can still do that. Clicking on environments shows us a more traditional breakdown of all of our machines by environment. From here, we can show all the targets within a specific environment. We can do advanced filtering, or there's a number of actions you can perform per environment. It's very flexible and it lets you do what you need to accomplish quickly and easily. Overall, Octopus 4 should be a lot more responsive, but our redesigned projects and infrastructure pages should make it a lot easier to work with the data you care about quickly and easily. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to try something mentioned in this video, head over to octopus.com/downloads and grab the latest release. See you next month and happy deployments.